أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In this session we are going to talk about basic statistical concepts So what is hypothesis testing? A hypothesis is an assumption or an educated guess or claim about some characteristic of a population which we should be able to support or reject accept or reject based on some empirical evidence based on the data that we collect now for example an electric bulb manufacturing company may claim that the average life of its bulbs is at least 1000 hours now they are making a claim that the average life of their bulb is 1000 hours now this is a hypothesis this is a claim that can be accepted or rejected now how do you test this claim for example if they are produ producing let's say 1 million bulbs a month you can take a sample of maybe 100 or 200 bulbs light them for maybe 1000 1, hours 2000 hours or whatever time it is record their lighting time and then compare them against this population mean or the average of the population or their claim hypothesis testing is a process for choosing between different alternatives the alternatives have to be mutually exclusive and exhaustive they are mutually exclusive if you choose one the other gets rejected being mutually exclusive means which one is true the other is false and vice versa being exhaustive means there should not be any possibility of any other relationship either they light for 1000 hours either they don't there is no middle way in the example of electric bulb manufacturer the following two options will have to be considered to verify the manufacturer's claim but so what are our hypotheses in case of this electric bulb manufacturing company that claims that their bulb lights for 1000 hours average life of the bulb is greater than or equal to 1000 hours average life of the bulb is less than 1000 hours we can see that these options are mutually exclusive as well as exhaustive there is no other option available you cannot have any other option either it's greater than or equal to 1000 either it is less than 1000 there is no other option available and these are mutually exclusive typically in hypothesis testing we have two options to choose from these are termed as null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis so what is null hypothesis it is the presumption that is accepted as correct unless there is a strong evidence against it so whenever we are proposing a hypothesis we have got two options null and alternate the null hypothesis is something that is that is claimed or accepted as correct unless or until we reject it so what is alternate hypothesis it is accepted when h0 is rejected so you reject h0 and your alternate is accepted so what actually happens is you are never accepting or supporting the alternate hypothesis you either reject the null hypothesis or you fail to reject the null hypothesis hypothesis testing null hypothesis represents the status quo an alternate hypothesis is the negation of status quo situation proper care should be taken while formulating your null and alternate hypothesis one way to ensure that null hypothesis is formulated correctly is to observe that when the null hypothesis is accepted no corrective action is needed if your null hypothesis is accepted this means there is status quo the claim of the electric bulb manufacturing stands true do you need to take any corrective actions afterwards no it's all right it's all good there is no difference in job satisfaction between male and female you do not need to take any corrective action in electric bulb example now if there is yes the claim stands true does the company needs to do anything no but what if the claim was false then they need to look into why our bulbs are not going for 1000 hours then they need to do something so if you reject your null hypothesis then there is a cause of concern 
Readers may note that negation of null hypothesis also means that some corrective action is needed to ensure the average life of the bulb is at least 1000 hours, as explained earlier. The example of hypothesis. Hypothesis testing helps in decision making in real life businesses, economics and research related problems. Now some of the examples, I'm just going to read one or two. Marketing. The marketing department wants to know if particular marketing campaign had any impact in increasing the level of product awareness. So this is a hypothesis. This is a claim that we want to check. But when we are writing our paper or research, we do not normally write our hypothesis like this. Our hypothesis is more like there is a significant impact of the marketing campaign on the level of product awareness or there is a significantly positive impact of marketing campaign on the level of product awareness. Now there are other hypotheses as well for production, for finance, for human resource, for quality of control, for economics, for research. So these are different hypotheses. Now these are claims that can be accepted or rejected. They can be true, they can be false. So what is type 1 and type 2 error? While testing a hypothesis, if we reject a hypothesis when it should be accepted, so when you reject a hypothesis, instead of accepting it, it amounts to type 1 error. On the other hand, when you accept a hypothesis, when it should be rejected, it is called type 2 error. Now how do you minimize this error? You have to increase your sample size. But generally, any attempt to reduce one error would mean that you are increasing the chances of the other error. The only way out is to improve the sample size. So what's the significance level? P-value. Now whenever there is a situation, whenever there is a condition, whenever there is a claim that has to be accepted or rejected, or whenever there is something that is to be accepted or rejected, there is a criteria to accept or reject it. In case of hypothesis, it's called significance level or p-value. There, there is always a probabilistic component involved in the accept-reject decision. In testing hypothesis, the criterion that is used for accepting or rejecting a null hypothesis is called significance level or p-value. The p-value represents the probability of concluding incorrectly that there is a difference in your samples when there is no true difference or when no true difference exists. The p-value is actually the probability value. So the p-value is actually the chance that we associate with our claim that it is or it may be wrong. That we have to reject our claim. That is we have to reject our null hypothesis. It is a statistic calculated by comparing the distribution of a given sample data and an expected distribution and it is dependent upon the statistical test performed. So we calculate our p-value and then compare it against a certain standard value and based on that comparison we finally reject or fail to reject our null hypothesis. For example, if two samples are being compared in a t-test, a p-value of 0 0.05 means there is only 5% chance of arriving at a calculated t-value if the samples were not different. So what's the chance that you associate that yes, there are that these two samples are different from each other? If you are comparing two samples, you are 95% sure that these two samples are equal What's your chance that these two samples are not equal? What's your claim or the obviously you cannot be 100% sure of everything. You have to give a certain amount of chance to your claim that you may be wrong 5%. There's a 5% chance that you may be wrong. There is a 10% chance that you may, you may be wrong. So in this case, this 0 0.05 means that you are associating 5% chance that there could be differences between the two samples. In other words, a p-value of 0 0.05 means there is only a 5% chance that you would be wrong in concluding that the two populations are different. 
or 95% confident of making a right decision that the two samples are equal. For social sciences research, a p-value of 0 0.05 is generally taken as standard. One-tailed and two-tailed tests. A directional hypothesis is tested with one-tailed test, whereas non-directional hypothesis is tested with two-tailed test. So what's a directional hypothesis and what's a non-directional hypothesis? In the directional hypothesis, there is a direction of relationship, a direction of effect, a direction of difference. Whereas in non-directional hypothesis, there is no direction, no difference. The following three relationships are only possible between any two parameters, mu1 and mu2. So your population 1 is equal to population 2. Your population 1 is less than population 2 or your population 1 is greater than population 2. At not, no differences. In null hypothesis, we are saying that there are no differences between the two populations. There is no difference in the job satisfaction score of male and female. So, this is your H0. There are differences in the job satisfaction score of male and female. This is your H1. But the differences can be directional. Male has a higher score of job satisfaction in comparison to female. Or female has a higher score of job satisfaction in comparison to female. Now there is a direction to this relationship or difference. In this case, this is two-tailed test. H1 is two-tailed. You do not know the direction of difference. But when you say that job satisfaction of male is greater than job satisfaction of female, then there is a direction to it. This is one-tailed test. So when you are testing this kind of hypothesis, you will use one-tailed test. But when you do not know the direction of difference, you will use two-tailed test. So the above hypothesis are non-directional as we are only concerned about the equality or non-directional inequality of relationship. A two-tailed test is done for such hypothesis. How the null hypothesis is rejected if the p-value obtained is less than and accepted if it is greater than the significance level. So at the end of this test, you will have a probability value that is compared against that standard of 0 0.05 in social sciences. If, the, if your obtained p-value is greater than 0 0.05, so what happens is you fail to reject the null hypothesis. That is, you are accepting your null hypothesis. If it is less than 0 0.05, you will reject your null hypothesis. Most of the times our objective is to reject the null hypothesis and find support for our alternate hypothesis in our business, finance or economic relation research. Therefore, we look for p-values less than 0 0.05. You want your relationships to be significant. So this was all about basic statistical concepts. Thank you very much.